back to model kit stuff um, and part three of our build of airfixes type 45 destroyer so let's deal with um, the silo for the um, sea to air missiles um, now the detail that comes on the parts that make up the um, sides for this um, it's, it's a slab sided construction um, so there's four sides and then you've got the silos that go in the middle um, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick that up um, but the detail is really very very nice it captures everything that's that's present and I do have in the etch set some replacement panels so there are um, opening panels here so on the real ship these are, are flush like these are um, and held in place with screws but they can be removed for, for, for access um, now if I put the etch on they're going to sit proud of that um, and I'm going to lose all of this detail because they're, they're less detailed they do have some very nice rivets and they do have um, correct, some corrected markings where the, the hand pulls are and, and bits and pieces um, but generally it's not as detailed it doesn't have all the little lights on for example so I'd have to remove all those with a chisel and glue them uh, back on um, and the end result is that the, the panels would sit proud anyway um, and it, I think it would look less correct than the airfix part not messed with so what I'm going to do with these parts is I'm going to remove the little there's a little rectangular piece you can see it just there under the light um, I'm going to very carefully remove that with my um, narrowest chisel um, which should get in and do the job okay so I'll just show you my chisel actually um, I don't use um, a hobby um, chisel, uh, a modelling chisel. Um, I find that the, the blades are a bit long and a bit thin and flexible um, and you need quite a bit of pressure to put to put through them um, uh, and you know, I have had a couple of accidents with them in, in the past where they take off too much part or they take off a bit of my finger um, and because and I'm quite attached to my fingers um, I decided to look at some better chisels and these are actually wood carving chisels which I do use on, on the wooden ship models that I do um, and, and this brand Flexi Cut which um, they're made in the USA I, I, I have found to be um, the very very best um, so I use these um, I, I got these actually as a, a present for, for Christmas one year um, maybe a couple of years ago um, and it came as a pack of five and, and they go from fairly wide to, to this and you can see that's quite fine we'll get into to most places that I want um, I have a sharpening stone so it's easy to keep them sharp um, so what I will do is I'll get in with this chisel I'll remove that little rectangle um, which is actually the name plate um, I have an etch replacement that's a better size but um, the main thing about the extra placement is I can paint it brown and I can gently rub the paint off the surface which will reveal the um, uh, word dragon in, in the brass col colour um, which will look much closer to the real thing. So, so that's what we're going to do with the, the sea to air missiles. So we'll, we will remove that, paint them up, we'll paint the nameplate up separately and, and put the nameplates on before we uh, assemble the, the things in place. I've already started cleaning up a lot of the um, smaller items, so uh, that includes the, the break water, the, the hangar door there, um, those are the silo hatches for the sea to air missiles, um, and then we've got um, bits for the radon tower, um, anchors, um, and all sorts of little things. Um, now, that is the uh, ball that goes on top of the, the, the tower um, and I've compared it to the trumpeter one and the trumpeter one is totally round and so is totally incorrect. This is absolutely the correct shape. It has, it's not 
quite round. It, it's quite it, it, it's quite an unusual shape. It's all a bit squashed on the sides, um, but yeah, that's correct. What um, what I am using though is some of the trumpeter parts on the um, bridge deck. So um, Airfix give you um, these side pieces which you, you, you glue into place and you can see there's a signal lamp um, moulded into that. Um, there's um, a little stand for the machine, machine gun there but no machine gun uh, and a small loud hailer um, all moulded in. Needs a little bit of clean up but you know it it's all there. Whereas Trumper to give you those parts um, individually and, and include the machine gun. Um, so they've put the machine gun on on a stand, but we can work with that. Um, the, the signal lamp has a little bit of finesse to it um, because it's not moulded in, in one piece, it's, it's better moulded. Um, and the loud hailers are separate parts as well. So um, that's just going to add. Um, for me a little bit more accuracy um, and a little bit more detail so I think that so far is the main area where I'd say Trumpeter um, outgunned Airfix on this model uh, the rest of it is Airfix all the way okay so I'm going to get on with um, starting to paint those and um, I'll come back to you when we ready to assemble bridge there I've also started putting in these um, side edgings here they need a little bit of filling in and smoothing because um, I'm using the trumpeter parts modified to fit the airfix kit because they're that much thinner and look and look a little bit better um, if you were doing this yourself I'd recommend making your own up from from plastic card um, but that does mean a little bit more filling um, you can also see that the um, sea to air missile silo is in. Um, still got some painting to do on that um, and some railings and a, and a bit of detail to go on there um, and also the breakwater is now in and I've used the airfix part there because the trumpeter part lacks detail is, is incorrect as well. So. Um, that's that done and we can also see hopefully that the glazing has now cleared off um, there's a bit of painting um, to do around the bridge area still but the glazing is is complete and I was asked in the last video um, if I could show an example of how to do the glazing so let's do that next Okay, David, this bit's for you, um, and I'm going to show you how to um, use micro crystal clear um, and cocktail stick or toothpick, if you like, um, to uh, glaze um, a window and a porthole. So um, I've created a couple of holes. Um, that's rough. That's a little bit bigger than the than the bridge windows are on the destroyer, um, but we'll just show you what can be done. And then I drilled a hole which would be a typical porthole size on a one two hundred uh, scale kit. Principle's the same um, for both um, and for any size. All right, it says on the bottle um, that for forming small windows, quarter of an inch or smaller. Okay, um, so all we do is we'll do the little pothole first. We put a small amount on the cocktail stick and then if, if it's possible to do so, go to the back of your uh, pothole and do it from the back. That just It just avoids any untidiness at the front. It dries clear but it also will be shiny which is why we're using it for, for glazing of course so all you need to do with the porthole is just put the cocktail stick slightly inside the hole move it round around the edges 
and then bring the cocktail stick back to the center and that so that it's filled with the um, macro crystal clear and then as it dries you'll see I'll try and get that to focus it's not wanting to focus there you go as it dries um, it'll be nice and clear now the principle is the same but you just need a little bit more for the for the bigger window so let's see if we can do this and make it easy for you to see so all we're doing is we've got some products on our cocktail stick we go into the hole and just go around the outside of the edges so we're laying some glue down yeah and then bring your cocktail stick into the middle and then slowly draw it backwards and out and there you go um, and what you're trying to achieve is a, is a film across the whole entirety of the gap um, so that as that dries it will gently go clear so 15 20 minutes it should it should be clear and dry uh, uh, it, it's very similar to PVA in in its drying um, habits um, the more that you've left in the hole the longer it takes to dry the bigger the hole the longer it takes to dry um, so uh, we'll come back to this later in the video and show you what that looks like okay hope that was helpful David so when you look at photographs of um, the real ship there are two domes that sit either side of the um, radon tower here um, and quite often in the photographs they look like they're slightly got a bit of a green hue to them they're, they're not a brilliant white like the other domes appear to be um, they've definitely um, got a bit of a green hue to them and I want to try and capture that because it's again it's just another little detail that adds to the the model and makes it become a bit more lifelike so these are the two domes here um, they've been cleaned up and they're, they're ready for a bit of paint um, and I'm going to use life color paints so I've got here Royal Navy white um, this is from the um, Second World War Western Approaches set and Royal Navy Western Approach Green um, which has a similar colour to it right from the start so what I want to do is to mix those and see if we can't get something similar um, so we're going to start uh, if you've not used live colour paints they're excellent paints for ships they, they have a satin finish which is natural for a ship um, they have an, a, num a range of colours that match um, the exact colours of, of the period uh, you know, w w without getting into an argument about um, batch colours and how, how accurate they are and so on and so forth um, we could have a whole video about paint shades um, having worked with military paints in my professional life I can tell you that no two batches are the same and different lights, different substrates um, different thicknesses, different painter mixing the paint all makes a difference to the shade so uh, I don't worry about such things as long as it's you know not orange when it should be red I'm, I'm, I'm good right so uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the paint from the cap um, the two domes aren't very big so we don't need very much so I've just put a couple of um, loaded brushes worth in and we'll just give that a bit of a clean and then we'll put a little bit of white in now this is a slightly off white to start with anyway it's not a brilliant white um, so I'm gonna do four brush loads up of the white so we've, we've mixed it of a ratio of 
um, four to two, uh, white to green. I'm going to give that a bit of a stir. See what that's looking like. So I think that wasn't a bad guess, but it's still probably a little bit too green at this stage. So I'm just going to put a bit of water in to thin it down a little bit. Um, Life Colours is one of the only paints that I don't have there thinners because I find water water does it, I spray with it, I brush paint with it. Um, it always needs a couple of coats but water seems to thin it fine. Um, right, so we're just going to load a little bit more white paint into this. Just work that in. Still a little, a little too green, ever so slightly. So that was the equivalent of uh, another two brush loads because there was quite a bit on that. There we go. And that's what I'm looking for. So that was uh, six to one, I think. Oh no, six to two, sorry. Six to two um, of the Royal Navy White and um, Western Approaches Green. Um, and that gives us A lovely pale minty green not sure if you can see that there we go so let's get these down now again as as per the rest of the kit none of this has been primed um, I do prime things occasionally if it needs to but as long as you've washed your parts and everything's nice and clean um, the first layer of paint is the same as putting primer down Absolutely the same. All primer is is a first layer of paint at the end of the day. Um, that, I think, you know, when I was a kid and I first started out modelling, I'm not even sure you could get primer. So, um, yeah. But certainly um, it has its uses when you've got um, different um, substrates you know, resin and etch brass and nickel steel and, and plastic and you want to make sure that the paint looks the same over all of it then priming absolutely can be helpful. So that's the um, first first layer on. We'll let that um, dry off. Um, I'll still have enough uh, wet paint there for a second coat and maybe even a third if needs be but shouldn't be needed. Okay, we'll show you what that looks like again in a minute. So I think we're gonna wrap this video up here. Um, as you can see that those um, domes have now been um, placed on the main mast tower. Um, and um, if you compare it to the uh, gun placement at the back, you can see the difference between the white and the, and the pale green. Um, and if you look at um, photographs of it at sea, it often has this green hue. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, so that's it for now. Um, when I come back to you, we'll discuss uh, what's up next and, and what I've done since I was away. Okay, take care, everybody. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Um, and thanks for watching. David, as promised, here's the finished thing. You can see nice glisten in the porthole and even the bigger window is glazed it has a nice shine on it and looks quite authentic see you soon